Welcome to Scott Bailey Memorial Field. Storm Blunchley back with the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Friday night lights are underway, at least for Storm and Garrett. This is our first one. If that one rolls to the back of the, back of the end zone, that's going to be a touchback. Coming up a little late today, a little bit of technical difficulties on our end, but hey, we're here, we're live, we're free, and it's Storm and Garrett. And Storm right there, Crestview almost with a huge miscue. Nobody back there to get the kick. Obviously, that's, that's not the plan you want to have going into the game here at home against East Knox, a foe that, you know, the Cougars have dominated here as of late, Storm, but this year they lost a lot of talent. Let's see if they can get it done here at home in front of the home fans. Yeah, multiple all Ohio wins. I mean, that's 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 tough holes to fill for anybody. But this Crestview team, they're looking to retool. They're not looking to have a rebuilding year. They're looking to have the same type of a uh, season. Yeah, Stromer, I think it's all going to start obviously with the running game and bringing in another Raymer, Aiden Raymer, not Addison Raymer like his big brother from last year. He was a highlight reel. But Aiden trying to fill those shoes as well as Liam Coon Storm. So we got two brothers trying to fill in the shoes here for some. Cougars who were pretty historic last season. Yeah, how crazy is that? The two brothers in the backfield as that's going to bring up second down and six for us here. Kuhn takes a snap under setter, hands it off to Raymer, has a lead blocker, but gets tripped up to bring up third down. You know, from not only did the Cougars lose, you know, a lot of talent, you know, in the skill positions, but, you know, down in the trenches, too, they lost a big guy, Mason Ringler, Noah Stewart. Those are just two names uh, of guys who were, you know, dominant players, not only that, but also senior leaders who were able to get those guys going, some of those younger guys. But now, you know, they, they need some of those younger guys to step up, and we'll see if maybe Gavin Barker and some of those other guys on the offensive line can get these guys going because Crestview – uh, that's what's made them so dominant, you know, cr across the past couple seasons is that offensive line and, of course, Gavin Keynes as well. So we'll see if they can get it done down there in the trenches. Gosh, there, there are more brothers on this team than I thought as Kuhn hands it off once again to Raymer. Going to wait for the spot, but I think that's going to be enough for a first down. Pretty straight run play to Storm right off the bat as Cougars trying to assert that dominance down at the line of scrimmage. and. It didn't look pretty storm, but it got the job done as the Cougars get the first first down of the game. No, I feel like that's all that really matters in football. Doesn't have to look pretty, just has to get the job done as we take a look. Actually, we'll wait. We'll, we'll give it a second to bring up our graphics. I know we're coming up a little late, but it's all right. It'll, it'll all work itself out, right, Garrett? <laughs> of course it will, Storm. This time in shotgun, hands it off once again to Raymer. Picks up a couple. That'll bring up second down. So we'll take a look at our home player spotlight. Of course, it's going to be QB Liam Kuhn, who, you know, stepping into a quarterback role, it's been filled by his brothers, you know, the last couple of years. It's been in a... I mean, he's got some playing time in those blowout wins last year. There's going to be a screen pass from Liam and a stiff arm from Raymer. But there's been a, you know, a couple of times where he's been able to come in at the end of games and, uh, you know, play a couple of snaps. And maybe that'll help out, you know, with these early season jitters, just a sophomore. Yes, yeah, Roman, of course, last season they, you know, were blowing teams out by 30, 40, you know, points at times. He was able to step in there and get some varsity experience. But this, it's a little bit different, Strom, when you start out the game and you're going up against ver other varsity-level talent and Liam Kuhn. Just 5 of 13, but I talked to some of the guys up in the press box, Storm, and they thought the Cougars' offense did pretty well last week. Just wasn't able to, you know, get that final touchdown and get back into the game. But he, he struggled a little bit. He had an interception, but he also had two touchdown storms in his first varsity start. This one's going to be a pass again. He's got a wide open man over the middle. That's Cleet Rogers crossing the 50-yard line for them. Liam Kuhn has Besides that screen, the second pass attempt here from Liam Kuhn, and he hits Cleet Rogers right in stride. He almost made a man miss Storm and took it for some extra yak, but big time gain here for the Cougars. Gotta love that yak if you're the offense as we take a look at our Cougars. Keys to victory here brought to you by Kissel's Lawn Care. Start the run game and get Kuhn comfortable, Garrett. They've been, they've been uh, excuse me, done a pretty good job of starting that off well. Yeah, Storm, I think they followed my exact keys <laughs> to success. Maybe Coach Avedon might have 
my keys for them because right right now they're getting the run game going and they're getting Liam Kuhn back there comfortable. He's had a couple dump off passes, had the one to Raymer, the one we just saw to Cleet Rogers to play before, and then another handoff. So doing exactly what I said, Storm. Yeah, maybe the the recipes for success with G Man is back. Who who knows, man? You know, he, you know, you you seem like a rough and tumble guy on the surface, but but you're wise. You know, you're like an owl. You got a lot of wisdom. <laughs> like a what? Like an owl? Like an owl. Is that, is that a thing? Yeah, like owls. I, I didn't know that owls. I didn't know that. I they have know. wisdom. Like you, you got a lot of coaching wisdom. Now setting up here on second and seven. That run from Rainer's, Raymer, excuse me, is going to come up just short of the sticks. That'll bring us to third down. This is the second third down that Crestview has faced so far on this drive, able to convert the first time. But this is a nice little opening drive they have here going on for their opener at Scott Bailey. Yeah, Storm, slow, methodical drive, mixing and running pass, doing a great job of it as a signal caller, Liam Kuhn, as well as the offensive co coordinator, Storm, and Coach Keener. So... Cougars on the move right here. Big third down, though, however. however, Liam this time under center. Takes the handoff, hands it off to Cleet Rogers. He's going to get ahead for the first down. Patient running right there from Cleet Rogers. Looked like there was nothing there, Storm. He just waited, waited patiently, and finally found the lane as the offensive line was able to carve out something. And as it moves the chains here for the Cougars at home. So the drive continues. And Garrett, you played a little bit of high school football, you know, junior and senior year. When do those kind of, you know, beginning of the season jitters wear off, especially for, you know, the younger guys? Uh, I don't think they wear off Storm really at all throughout the entirety of the season. You're always going to have jitters right before the game, at least for me. But the, as soon as the, the first series starts i think they go out the window i think you just forget and you start to be, you, you just play some uh, some ball but you're always going to have it right before the game but as soon as you get out there and start playing then it, it just goes out the window and you just get ready to go as we see raymer again once again bouncing it outside for a good pickup that'll bring up second down i don't know if you know the storm but josh allen quarterback of the bills actually throws up before every single game he's done it since high school I, I feel like I've heard that somewhere or at least heard of somebody doing that. I, I feel like if I were to do that, I would play significantly worse. Because I would just be like, I just threw up. Like, I feel so nasty. I need to, like, lay down. Kuhn once again. Pitch this time to Rogers. Wrapped up by a couple of Bulldogs, but not before picking up the first down. That's what we've seen the past few seasons. Crestview's had East Knox number, but don't forget about that playoff game storm. Just a couple years ago where East Knox was able to win that one, and they went all the way to the final four, but weren't able to get it done. I'm not sure if that still plays a factor storm in this rivalry. Crestview has pretty much owned the past couple seasons, but I think East Knox coming up here to Scott Bailey might have that on their mind. And I believe if I'm – Correct me if I'm wrong. This is East Knox's first time at Scott Bailey, right? Yeah, because the, the last season, two seasons ago, they played at when Crestview was at Ashland for the first half of that season when they were getting a Scott Bailey Memorial Field redone with the turf. So I believe at least since we've been covering game storms, this is the first time East Knox has been up here. At least on the new turf. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll phrase it that way as the Crestview offense continues to drive down the field. We've got a second and five here with 5.30 left to go here in this opening quarter. Kuhn under center, takes the snap, hands it off. Cleet Rogers gets shut down right at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third down. Very different play style storm, the Cougars from last year already. I mean, last season was, you know, kind of flashy, you know, go, going deep. Having those exotic run plays for Addison Raymer, but this year is a little more slow and methodical for him, kind of milking that clock. I mean, we're already under five minutes here in the first quarter. Kuhn now hands it off to Raymer. He'll get stopped, and here's where things get interesting as a play caller, Garrett. A fourth and short here right up against the goal line. I feel like you kind of have to go for it here, but we'll see what happens. What, what, let's step into, into Coach G-Man's corner. What? What kind of play is Coach G-Man calling here? Storm, I'm smart, but I'm definitely going for this one here. Fourth and just a couple yards. You know, it's not a gimme field goal here in high school. I'm going for it. I'm relying on my offense. 
And, and if you don't get it, their East Knox at least backed up in their own territory, and they're going to have to go the length of the field if they want to get a touchdown. All right, here we go. Fourth down here in the opener for Crestview at Scott Bailey Memorial Field. Kuhn takes the snap, hands it off to Raymer. Bulldog in the backfield, doesn't matter. Raymer gets outside, gets out of bounds, and picks up a big first down. What a stiff arm right there, Storm. Aiden Raymer hitting the Heisman pose. East Knox is in the backfield. It didn't matter. Sift on him into the turf and was able to get the edge for the first down. This East Knox defense, they've been playing well, uh, backing up Crestview to, you know, third and manageable, third and short, third and medium, even fourth down. But, I mean, this Crestview offense is stepping up, making plays when they have to. And East Knox defense were playing great last week. They didn't allow a score in the second or fourth quarter. They won 14 nothing versus Northridge, a very low scoring game. And on the first drive here, the Cougars knocking on the door. Liam hands it off. Cleet stuffed in the backfield that time. Going to be a loss on that one. Cleet Rogers right there. Kind of stuffed in the hole. Might have tripped over his own Cleet. Did Cleet storm. <laughs> <laughs> so on our roster, Cleet is at uh, his position's technically running back. But would you say he fills in kind of more as a fullback role? Yeah, Storm. He lines up usually the fullback position, but he, he can – you know, I, I would list the cleat at probably an athlete. <laughs> I think he can do it all. I mean, you've seen him. He, he caught a pass on this drive. He obviously is not just a fullback. He typically, you know, runs the football in tight situations. He also can go out for pass a storm. Liam now fakes the handoff. Boot right. Kind of a jump pass there. Has a man open, and that's going to be a touchdown. Keith Abshire on the receiving end of that one, and that opens up the scoring for the Cougars. Crestview with the first score of the night. Nice little play action pass for him. Liam Kuhn right over the top. Nobody even near Keith Abshire. And the Cougars strike first here, Storm, on Friday night. Six nothing Cougs. Almost look it was gonna be like it was gonna be a play for a loss, but somehow Kuhn uses the athleticism to find his man Abshire to open up the scoring six to nothing as the field goal unit steps on for the PAT. Good snap, good hold, and that one's going to be up and in to make things 7-0 in favor of the Cougars. Garrett, after that tough loss last week, it's got to feel good to step up on your opening drive here at home and get a big score. Yeah, that's from exactly what they needed and jolt some you know, life into this team. Coming off the loss last week, it's not great to always lose week one storm. Kind of starts the season off, obviously, with a moral loss. You don't want to have that. You want to gain some confidence back, and the Cougars did right there. And it was a very slow, methodical drive storm, but it doesn't matter how it gets in the end zone as the Cougars strike first. And only 3.17 remaining here, Storm, in this first quarter as Crestview just about milked the entire first quarter. <laughs> We're going to take a look now at our team spotlight here for the home turf Crestview. Cougars start off 0-1, like we mentioned. Lost to Seneca East. 21 to 12 after I believe being tied at halftime if I'm not mistaken yep. they've lost a ton of not only starters but all Ohioans and they're looking to bounce back in a non-conference rivalry here this is a pretty good rivalry for it being non-conference yeah so I think this is a great rivalry two teams and two schools and two communities that absolutely love their football programs and two great football programs at that from so these teams are typically in the playoff hunt and if not in the playoff hunt from so they're usually in the playoffs East Knox coming off a down year last season, going 2-8. and eight, But, I mean, they're always in it. Storm. They're such a tough team to beat. I mean, the Cougars up 7 nothing. This game, obviously, got a long way to go against these Bulldogs. Epshire to kick off for the Cougars. Kick is away. It's a low dribbler here for the Cougars. That is fielded by Brayson Davis. Nice return by number four, Brayson Davis. So let's see how the East Knox offense responds here, Storm. See if they can get a drive of their own going. And they lost, you know, a lot of guys last year too, just like Crestview did. Carson Steinmetz, of course, cold the lotter now over at Danville. So a lot of shoes to fill, Storm, for the Bulldogs. First and ten for the Bulldogs. They're starting at the 38-yard line. So here we go now. First play from the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be a nice pickup there for the Bulldogs as Aaron White, the senior, rumbling, bumbling, tumbling ahead for a first down. Straight up the gut. Tackle on the play. 
Nice little fake, too, by Jax Lust from the backfield. They ran a bubble screen storm to kind of distract the corners out there, and it worked. As I believe it was one of the linebackers for Crestview. If he wasn't able to get a hold of him, Aaron White might have been all the way stormed to the touchdown. So great first play for East Knox to bring us up second and manageable. On second down. That looks like it's not going to be enough for the first, so that will bring up third down here for the Bulldogs on their opening drive. We take a look at their player spotlight brought to you by Kissel's Lawn Care, QB Jack Lester. And he, he, he was a standout last year, Storm. He's a young guy, obviously, just a sophomore this year, just like Liam Kuhn. These teams are, are pretty much mirror images of each other in some aspects. Jack Lester last year, he was 86 of 159. For almost a thousand yard storms and a couple touchdowns, so room for improvement, obviously, but still a solid campaign last year as a freshman. We'll see if he can improve that this season. Oh my goodness! Big hit right there on third down, stopping the Bulldogs for Crestview. We take a look at this replay. Wow, man, Storm, that was Caleb Cunningham, and he came with a force. Boom! I can white in the backfield as it's going to bring in the punt team here for East Knox and a huge stand for the Cougars as it was second and very short storm and Chris, you able to stand tall here and force a punt. We knew who, we know who ate their Wheaties this morning, Garrett. That's for sure. Not me. <laughs> Little McDonald's breakfast for us. Stoppage on the field by the refs here. Football problem. Is there a is there a special football for uh, for kicking? Uh, not that I know of, Storm. But a lot of things have happened since I played last, so I'm not sure. It's a booming punt here for the Bulldogs, fielded by Tyson Ringler, but swallowed around the start of the uh, where the, he caught the ball. So that'll bring up first down deep in their own territory for the Cougars. If you're East Knox Storm, you don't want to allow Cressy to drive down here and get an, uh, some points on the board and go down and, and double figures. See if the defense can stand tall here for the Bulldogs. As you know, Cressy doesn't have great field position. It was a nice punt. Special teams unit able to get down there too and get a stop. So we'll see if the defense gear for the Bulldogs can stand tall. First and 10 for the Cougars. They hand it off. Ramers getting outside, had a hole, but quickly closes. There's a herd of Bulldogs to bring up second down. Even the minimal gain storm, Crestview, they're, they're, you know, they're churning out four or five yards every single play. The defensive line for East Knox has got to get some disruption and free some of those linebackers because they're not able to get downhill and get after that running back. Take a look at our away team spotlight here for the East Knox Bulldogs. They're 1-0, beat Northridge last week 14-0. Lost multiple key players last year, just like Crestview, Garrett. It's kind of like these two teams are looking into a mirror. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. They both lost key guys on both sides of the ball. Cressy lost a lot of guys that was key to that playoff run, but it's going to be a defensive battle here tonight, Storm, as East Knox able to get in the backfield and wrap up. I believe that was Cleet Rogers back there. East Knox able to stifle him and force a third down here, so big third down here for the Bulldogs, D. I think we're going to flip the field here before this third down happens. And with that, we have our score at the end of the first quarter, seven to zero in favor of the home field Crestview Cougars. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. Are you ready for the comeback? Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. I'm Josh with Scout Construction. 
proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Hello and welcome back to Scott Bailey Memorial Field. Storm Blunchley joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, it was a pretty good Crestview first half for that as they're backed up to third and medium range here. Raymer gets the handoff. I think they're going to call him... Nope, they're going to call that a first down there for the Cougars. So similar to how they started their last drive, Garrett, the East Knox defense able to force, you know, third in that mid-range area, and Crestview able to pick it up. There's no reason to go away from a run game storm. If East Knox is having trouble stopping it, it's the combination of Cleet Rogers and Aiden Raymer right now are doing works on this East Knox defense as they're beginning to churn out first downs. Let's see if they can get something going here on the second drive. Liam fakes the handoff, looking to make a pass. Got a man deep, has Tyson Ringler with the catch. Wow, a beautiful pitch and catch off the play action pass. Raymer to Ringler. Beautiful pitch and catch storm, a nice play fake. Dipping down Liam Kuhn and then drops one right in a bucket storm to Tyson Ringler for a big splash play storm. They can do both. They can be methodical, but they also can hit that high right. Highlight real play is Liam Coombe with a beautiful pass to Tyson Ringler. Look at this one again. Now how about that one for let's keep on the run play for you, Garrett, making you eat your words there. <laughs> Raymer once again with the handoff. <laughs> Swallowed up that time for minimal gain. And that was the QB storm from East Knox. That was Jax Lester hey, filling Raymer. that hole right there. And absolutely pow driving. Aiden Raymer with a huge hit. <laughs> Looked a little bit more like the WWE right here. <laughs> As that will bring up second and eight. A familiar spot here for Crestview tonight. Take a look at our keys to victory here for the Bulldogs. Get the offense going and draw in the crowd noise. We know the Bulldogs, you know, their community gets behind them. We've heard some of this Crestview crowd storm. they got to drown that out, but they also got to get their crowd going with some splash plays themselves. That is East Knox. Another handoff to Aiden Raymer. It just seems to be too easy right now, Storm, for the Cougs. Definitely for sure. Not, not sure exactly what the adjustments need to be here for the Bulldogs, but you got to switch something up. It isn't working as we see Crestview third and short again. We'll see if... Uh, there's a little deja vu, and they're able to pick this one up as well. Coon hands it off to Raymer. Don't think there's enough yardage there to get the first down, and that's going to bring up another interesting fourth down call here from Steve Haverdale. They're going to give it to him, so. Oh, wow. I have horrible depth perception, so. <laughs> it was close. Uh, I think ref had to take a second look at it. I think that it's time to bring out the, the classic. You know, that's why I'm up here in the commentating booth. It is. Not down there on the there field. It is. <laughs> Coon, this time a pitch to Raymer. He's got blockers in front of him, tries to bounce it outside. Another host of Bulldogs there to take him down, though. Once again, Storm, at the end of the play there, Jax Lester using the physicality, but great job from the defense as a whole of East Knox drawing that one out and forcing Raymer to just keep going outside, Storm, and letting his guys come and wrap up Raymer in the backfield for a huge loss. And now this changes things for Crestview. Yeah, I feel like your your play calling definitely changes a lot here as a, as a you know, being second and 15 as opposed to, you know, second and five, second and eight, something like that. We'll see uh, what the Cougars elect to do. Not a down where you necessarily have to pass it, but they've had success in the passing game. Coon takes a snap. Little one-step drop. Has a man. That's going to be a touchdown. Carter Goon able to reel it in off of the Liam Coon pass. Touchdown, Cougars. And Storm. How many brothers do we have for the past couple <laughs> seasons? This one, Coon. 
to Carter Goon right down the seam store. And there was, and it was a great pass too. He threaded the needle. Got it right past the outstretched defenders. Now Chris Hugh leads 13-0 with 8.32 remaining, pinning this PAT from Abshire. Some brilliant play calling here from Haverdale. Backed up to second and 15, they recognize, and maybe the run's not gonna work here. This close to uh, our end zone, they go with the pass, and with that kick, they'll go up 14 to zero. PAT was good by Keith Hampshire. 8.32 remaining in the first half with the Cougars at 14. So Crestview now leading 14 to zero with 8.32 left to go here in the second quarter. Much swifter drive than the first drive they had out. Garrett, what does this Bulldogs team need to do to answer and maybe steal some of that momentum back? I think they have to get points on this drive, Storm, before going into halftime. Got to do whatever it takes to get something on the board here and stop this Crestview team. They're on fire right now defensively, offensively. They're getting the job done. Let's see if Jax Lester, the, the sophomore QB for the Bulldogs, can get something done here and get that offense going on the other side for the Purple. music, Vanderpool and Caitlin Senecki. And Shire tees the ball. Cougars line up to kick this one away. Is Garrett, it is a hot one out today. It's not only is it hot, but it's incredibly just like wet. It's very humid. Very humid, yeah, that's what I was looking for. I think it's died down a little bit. I'm it's sweating. Kinda, it's kind of getting a little cold out here in the elements. Well, maybe we should trade because I'm I'm very hot up here in the press box as this one fielded by the Bulldogs. A little bit of space there for Caden Wingard. Nice little return yeah, there to the 30-yard line, and that'll set up this Bulldogs yeah. offense with some decent field position. Yeah, pretty solid field position. Much better from their first drive that they had. Wingard, nice return right there on special teams. Let's see what East Knox does if they're aggressive here and try to pass the ball, if they try to continue to stick to their game plan and run the football. This is a big drive for them. They got to steal some of this momentum back from Crestview. Those Bulldogs fans, they've been a little quiet here tonight. See if uh, the Bulldogs can give them something to cheer about as that's a nice pitch and catch. Josh Keith on the receiving end of that pass. Crestview playing some off coverage right there, Storm. Lester makes some pay for two. Nice easy slant for nine yards. It brings up second and one. You don't have to play hero ball, Garrett. You don't You don't have to get it all back at once. One of my favorite sayings, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, if you give a man a peanut, you're, you can't expect to farm the next day. You, you got to give him some time. Uh, you know, you can't always go for the home run. It's those little dink and dunk passes, those little dink and dunk runs that will get you back into this one. If they play their, their cards right, Storm, and milk some of this clock with the run game, just like Cressy did that first quarter, it could be – you know, that, that one for two switch where they get the ball come out of halftime too if they can get a touchdown here to really end things in the second quarter. Obviously still a lot of time left with 740, but Chris, you did it. Let's see if the East Knox Bulldogs can do it. You know, milk some of that clock and then get the ball right back at half. Down just 14-7. If they can get a touchdown, of course, and then try to tie things up, but not as easy storm as it is saying it up here in the bleachers. Blake Elliott picking up the first down for the Bulldogs. Another passing play. That's going to be Brayson Davis breaking a tackle and getting about nine yards on that one to bring up second and short. Passing game right here. He's doing wonders. Storm Lester, nice pass out here to Davis. He makes a man miss. Gets an extra couple yardage. Is up to about the 50 storm here with second and short. Tackler on the play was number seven, Nolan Moore. So the Bulldogs about... An inch short of the 50-yard line here. Two receivers to the right as Jack Lester is in I formation. I believe the Bulldogs saw something that they didn't like. So that's going to be a timeout here, and we're going to take a quick break. The Cougars lead the Bulldogs 14-0. We'll be right back.
Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Hello and welcome back to Scott Bailey Memorial Field. Storm Bluntly joined, of course, by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And out of the timeout, East Knox facing a second and short. Roll out, quick catch. And that'll be enough for the first down for the Bulldogs. They're marching. This passing offense from a shredding and dicing through this Crestview defense. The run game, not so much, but Jax Lester and company getting the job done here on this drive. That's going to bring up a first down here for the Bulldogs. It's their first time being across the 50-yard line with 6.22 left to go here in the second quarter. Another quick pitch and catch. Looks like Brayson Davis wasn't ready for it, though, as that one falls incomplete, second and 10. Even though Davis there with the drop strong, he was still open, and a nice pass from Lester. He was able to corral that. Would have been second and short once again here for the Bulldogs. It's a nice drive here, but Chris, you getting a break there for the drop. Kind of feel uh, East Knox getting back into this one just a little bit. So once again, Lester in the shotgun formation. Rolls out, looks like he wants to keep it himself. He does. Big gain, but not enough for the first down. I don't know if that was going to go anywhere. Storm was Chris was almost able to get in the backfield. And Lester able to make something out of nothing, Storm. Getting out there to the edge and getting a big gain. And now I'm bringing up third and manageable. And this is what you want to be as, be in as, as an offense. These third and manageables, these third and shorts that make it a little bit easier on your quarterback, Storm, that he doesn't have to, you know, go for the home run ball and try to get a first down. Doesn't need much here, about four or five yards. Grayson Burgess with the stop on that one as Lester rolls out to his right. Looks like it was almost the same play, just to the opposite side, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. it initially looked like he was trying to pass Storm, but you know, nobody was out there tucking and take off. <laughs> First down for the Bulldogs is a great drive here with 529 remaining Storm. So East Knox putting together a good drive. What do you think Crestview needs to do defensively here to put a stop to this one and get the ball back before halftime. Right now, Storm, this East Knox offense is moving the ball well. They're mixing the run and pass, especially when you have a QB like Luster who can you know, run with his feet. It's a handoff here for the Bulldogs. Going to get big yardage, Storm not. Almost able to take it to the crib was the Bulldogs, but tripped up. What a missed opportunity there for East Knox, but nonetheless, still a huge game. At Blake Elliott, the six-foot junior for the Bulldogs. Big gain there for East Knox. I think that might be their, you know, one of their longest yards for our place from scrimmage here. Elliott line back up in the backfield. So I'm going to see if they go back to him. He had a big gain on the play before. They'll keep it with Lester. Lester looking to pass. Got him in. Open in the end zone. And that's going to be a touchdown. Brayson Davis able to hang on to that one. Beautiful pitch and catch. Beautiful pass here from Lester and Davis. Wide open storm, great separation on the route. Little corner route, able to get the touchdown here and a big drive from East Knox. You know, the door was beginning to come, a little shut storm if Crestview was able to get another touchdown and go up by three scores, but they shut that down real quick as Davis, beautiful pass from Lester, drops it in a bucket, pinning the PAT storm, 6-14. We're gonna get a flag here on the try. Uh-oh. I think that's going to be. I think it's going to go against the Cougars. A little neutral zone infraction. Infraction. And so, so now I think this is a a go for it. This could be a go for opportunity storm. I think they might be going for it here. This is a go for, huh? Because they're going to move the ball all the way up to about the two three yard line. They're going to stick with the PAT storm. So an interesting call here. 
Could be a game changer. There's 4.57 left to go here in the second quarter. That one's up. And through the uprights. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You've been watching high school football here live and free on the OH Report. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Welcome back to Scott Bailey Memorial Field as the East Knox cap off a terrific drive here in the second quarter to come back in within a touchdown. Seven to six as there's a hole opening here for Crestview. Bryce Perkins with a big return as we take one more look at that touchdown pass. It's just gonna be a rollout to the left storm and Lester going against the grid here storm. Opposite way of the throwing arm to the left. Beautiful pass, too. Great separation from Grayson Davis. Is now East Knox looking to get a stop here, Storm. And if they can, they have a chance to get the touchdown and that two for one switch if they can get a touchdown, Storm, ahead in the halftime and then get the ball back since Crestview received it first. Now the offense went out and did it for East Knox. Now the defense has to step up. A stop here would be huge, especially if they're able to convert it into more points as Raymer trying to get outside gets tripped up at about the line of scrimmage, and that's kind of what we've been seeing here. East Knox had trouble stopping the run on the very first drive, but near the end of that second drive, they seem to have kind of figured it out. It's hard to stop teams that can also pass the ball storm with the play action, especially we saw from Liam Cooney hit a, a big play action pass to Tyson Ringler earlier in this ball game. Let's see if Crestview elects to go back to the passing game as we had a big explosion play there on that second drive. It's second long here for Coon. Liam takes a snap from shotgun, hands it off once again to Raymer, leaps over a man, breaks a tackle, but enough to be tripped up and bring up third down. Raymer upset with himself too because he had some room strong. He was able to get past that shoestring tackle. Any way you can get him down, Storm, you got to get him down and right there. Just by the shoestrings, East Knox able to drag Raymer to the ground. I'm talking shop with a couple of guys up here in the press box, Garrett. They say Raymer, he's you know he's a pretty quick kid like his older brother, and I'm not surprised. You now they're they're a fast group of siblings. Runs in the family storm. We've seen enough Addison Raymer highlights last year to believe that we're going to see some more Raymer highlights this year. Another play action pass storm. Another oh. beautiful catch. Look at that precision accuracy. Coon once again to Tyson Ringler. Wow. Great catch right there by Ringler. Talk about some grip, grip strength storm. Coon ripped this over the middle, too. This is a tough throw. And some tough coverage, too. I mean, hits him right in the hands, right in stride, right on the money. It's not Crestview in East Knox territory at their 40. Yeah, Josh Keith was on him like glue right there. Coon able to fit it in, though, and pick up the big first down for the Cougars. Three minutes and counting here now in the second quarter. Another handoff to Raymer. He almost broke free there, but <laughs> will get tackled. A little Houdini act right there. Stormy disappeared for a second and was able to come out of the pack, but just a small gain. But even their small gain, Storm, feels such – it feels so much more. I mean, that was a five-yard gain. It felt like he didn't really go anywhere, but those are crucial plays for a running offense like Cressy that sets up those play-action passes where they've been able to really, you know, pick apart – the East Knox defense with some of those passes. Liam Kuhn rolls out to his right, steps up in the pocket, tries to go on the sideline and does another connection there from Kuhn and Ringler. That was a little bit of toe drag swag right there, Storm. Kind of hard to tell from our angle, but. Oh, I think he's clearly oh, in. He's, he's definitely in. 
I, I was just curious if he got both of them in storm, which I think he did. And a little NFL catch. A little NFL catch there from Tyson Ringler there on the sideline. But I just reiterated storm, the play action pass and working for the Cougars. It's because of that run game. It is doing so well. Coon this time hands it off. Raymer finds a hole outside. Picks up about six, I'd say. And that'll bring up second and medium here for Crestview. And that's from what I think is so interesting about high school, and I used, to th I used to think about this a lot when I used to play, is the quarterback has to run all the way across the field. <laughs> he has to run all the way across the field to get the play call. I don't think I could do that every play. Oh, I couldn't. I, I feel like it's I farther be, than people think it is. I, I mean, every single play. I would offense. be tired from running to the sideline to the middle of the field. Like, I would, I legitimately, they would have, we'd have to call timeout. As Liam has it, fakes, keeps it himself, almost gets dragged down and eventually does, and that'll bring up third down here in short, but not before a flag. Uh, you know, that's something that's so embedded in my in my head. Like, I didn't even notice that. You're, you're telling me every play? How many plays, like, does an offense run? A hundred? Uh, I mean, it just depends. It depends on how the game goes. I think it's variant, but I would say – at least a hundred. I don't know what I would say. NFL, I would think a hundred ish. I don't know the top of my head. I would say in high school probably like seventy five. It's gonna be a penalty against the Cougars, so they're gonna move back here. Fifty, seventy, maybe. I think we're gonna replay the second down. So seventy, and that's I mean, how far is it from the sideline to the middle of the field? I don't know the measurements from sideline to sideline actually. I think actually I think it might be fifty yards. That seems right. So 25 yards times 75, I can't do that. Now. If anybody in the comments knows the measurements of the field, let us know because I kind of want to I, I know more about this debate. Yeah. As Coon hands this one off to Raymer on second, and Olivesburg gets outside. Another big game. <laughs> yeah, there it was. That one making a comeback. I don't like to see this storm. Aiden Raymer. Seems to be shaking up on the play. Was hit low. Let's hope he's okay. Looks like he's going to get up and try to shake this off. Yeah, you, know, you never like to take a hit there in that midsection, that's for sure. So all we can hope is that it's just a little stinger and he's uh, – it looks like he's going to stay in the game. Tough kid, huh? Raymer is. And I think they're mandatory storm. They're going to send him off to get checked up, which is obviously the right thing to do. But Chris, you hear they're doing a good job milking this clock strong. They don't want to give East Knox another chance with the football before half. 106 remaining and, and, and ticking. Let's see what they do here on third down. Let's see if there's four down territory here for the Cougars. See if they got some shot clock cheese here. It's about third and six. Liam rolls out to his right, has a man open. We'll see if they call that one a catch. That was Bryce Perkins. And that is going to be a catch here for the Cougars. That's kind of a tough call there for the side judge. He, I believe that was Perkins had his back kind of turned to the referee, so not able to get a good look. See if we can on the replay here. Oh, under it. So under it, right? Did you see it? I wasn't able to get a look at it. So I'm going to save gonna it. We're going to get a timeout. In, okay, well, we're going to look at it. That, that's challenge, maybe? <laughs> challenge. No, the, I, I think he was under it. You tell me when you want it frozen. Uh -huh. Go ahead and freeze it. Oh, I think there's a little bit I of think green. There's a little bit of green storm. I think it's in between his arms. What do they? What is it? It's a Fox Super View where they zoom in. Yeah. I need that. Can my replay team get on that? I, I think he's under it. Here's this one, Storm. Good thing there's not challenges in high school because you think there's the indisputable there's evidence. Not, I don't think there's indisputable evidence. That's what I was about to say. I don't think there's enough evidence from our replay crew to overturn this. But let, it doesn't let us really know, matter. Hey, let us know in the comments. The let us know in the comments if you think that that was a catch or not. And, and a huge shout out to our wonderful replay crew. You're welcome. No, no problem. The joke was it's me. <laughs> As we see, a first and 10 here for the Cougars. They're knocking on the door of the end zone. As they've got just 43 seconds to put this one all the way to pay dirt. Say that like it's a short amount of time. That that's an eternity here. We'll see what they elect to do. Coon and shotgun fakes the handoff. Wants to throw it. 
gets rid of it. Back corner of the end zone. Got a guy, Bryce Perkins. And that's going to be a touchdown. Liam Kuhn dicing this Bulldogs defense through the air. And it's from, he looked like Patty Mahomes on this play. Scrambling out to the left. I mean, throwing back across his body. And Perkins was wide open. Not a Bulldog in sight storm. As Crestview. An absolute masterclass storm of a drive right there. 37 seconds remaining. It's going to make it hard for East Knox to go down and get a score. And, of course, going up two scores now, pinning this PAT up 13. Let's see if they can make it 14. We will see. They left a little bit of time here for the Bulldogs. 37 seconds as the PAT is up but blocked. So that will leave the score at 20-7. to 7. We're going to take a quick break. You've been watching high school football here live and free on the OH Report. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Hello and welcome back to Scott Bailey Memorial Field. Storm Blundley joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, press you pulling off a little bit of the shot clock cheese there as Liam Kuhn with another touchdown through the air. The West are the uh, aerial attack here for Crestview is unreal. Struggled last week a bit, Storm, but tonight doing wonders as Kuhn getting the job done, Storm. Crestview now 27. Let's see if East Knox has anything up their sleeve. Good return here. It's going to be out to the 30. Because that's where East Knox will start their offensive drive here with 30 seconds. Let's see how aggressive they are. They get the ball, come out at halftime. Let's see if they like to you know, take a couple shots and then take a knee. Or if they decide to just knee this one out and head to the locker room. Plus Caden Wengard on the return. It'll be interesting, as you mentioned, to see what they do with just a mere half minute left to go in this first half. I think it's plenty of time to take a couple shots, Storm. The only thing you don't want to do is give Crestview the ball back yeah. and still have some time on the clock and good field position. So they are going to elect to keep it on the ground, but a lot of room here for Lester. Whew. As he gets taken down, we'll see if the Bulldogs elect to take a timeout. Looks like they will not. And I think that's going to do it here for the first half for us. 20 to seven, your score here. I'm, I'm waiting. They're kind of like staying on the field. Okay, they're not staying on the field. 20 to seven, your score here at halftime. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back for the band shows. You have been watching high school football here live and free on the OH Report. Are you ready for the comeback? Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. 
Visit Mazda's.com for weekly specials and make Mazda's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The pub, kitchen, and tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection of both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you want to catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the pub kitchen and tap has something for everyone. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
gentlemen. Under the direction of Hannah Wolf, Devin Renninger, and color guard instructed by Kennedy Nonnenmaker, we proudly present to you the 2023 Marching Cougar Prize. Tonight we present to you for your halftime entertainment, our Top Gun Show. with a song originally recorded by Jerry Lee Lewis in 1957. This song was performed in the original Top Gun movie in 1986 and is available on the special edition of the soundtrack released in 1999. The song was performed again in the Top Gun sequel in 2022. The original recording of this song was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 1998. Sit back and enjoy our performance of Great Balls of Fire. for both Top Gun movies. This song won a Grammy Award in 1987 for Best Pop Instrumental Performance. Here is the MCP's performance of the Top Gun anthem.
We closed tonight's show with a song that was recorded and released by Kenny Loggins in 1986. This song became Loggins' second highest chart hit, topped only by his 1984 number one hit, Footloose. Give it up for the Marching Cougar Pride as they play Danger Zone. Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazas.com for weekly specials and make Mazas your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The pub, kitchen, and tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection of both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you want to catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the pub kitchen and tap has something for everyone. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Hello and welcome back to Scott Bailey Memorial Field where we've got an exciting one here between the East Knox Bulldogs and the Crestview Cougars. The Cougars currently lead 20 to seven, but we saw how easily East Knox was able to get on the board. Storm Blunchley, of course, joined by my partner in crime, the illustrious. Garrett Parr led in Garrett. This was a this was a an interesting half, I think, to say the least. As we saw Crestview, you know, everybody kind of thought it was going to be another, you know, kind of run heavy year, but Liam Kuhn, a perfect, I believe, nine of nine with 150 yards. Yeah, Storm Kuhn, nine of nine in that first half for three touchdown passes. Crestview able to get it done through the air and on the ground game. 237 yards of total offense. 87 rushing yards. They they really started out on the started out on the ground game in that first quarter, and then kind of backed away from it, and got that passing game going. But for East Knox, I think their bread and butter storm was that passing game. Those quick slants, those quick out routes, get some of those receivers open in space. Let's see if the Bulldogs come out a little bit more aggressive. Storm as time now beginning to become a factor. Down two scores, and now starting the second half. But they do get the ball, which is in their favor. And what do you think the adjustments are from both teams here coming out of halftime? Crestview, they have the lead going into the third. East Knox, they get the football despite being down two touchdowns. You know, and that PAT missed at the end of the half for Crestview. That could come back big. Yeah, Storm, that just down 13 are the Bulldogs. If they can come out here and get a touchdown, it will do wonders for them to get some confidence back in and get this game just to a one-score game. But Crestview, I mean, so far they've been pretty much flawless, Storm. They had one drive where they couldn't get anything going and had to give the ball back to East Knox. But other than that, it's been all Cougars here, and East Knox is going to have to have an answer here on this drive. I think this, this opening drive coming in the second half is definitely crucial for the uh, Bulldogs. Lost our scoreboard. There we go. <laughs> you said it, bro. Sorry, I was looking for our scoreboard there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting second half, to say the least, as things are now underway. East Knox with a little bit of room get across, almost across the 50-yard line. So that'll be a big play for them as they start with great field position. Perfect way to start it, too. Great, great return here. Great field position now. Bulldogs. Almost near the 50 storm, just a couple yards away. Three, About the 47. So let's see if this offense can get some stuff going, get this passing game going. But to open up the passing game storm, you're going to have to you know, suck down those linebackers and use the run game to their advantage. Let's see if they can get it going with Elliott. So a big run and a big stiff arm here from East Knox. It's, that was a lot of work for not a lot of yards there, Garrett. Million dollar move, Storm with the 10 cent finish right there. Jax Lester, beautiful stiff arm, even had the hurdle too. But still, too many Cougar Storm, storm are able to catch up to him and stop him just for a minimal gain. That'll bring up second down here for the Cougars, or excuse me, for the Bulldogs. As Lester and company set up just outside of the 50 yard line. Lester takes a snap and shotgun, rolls to his left. A couple of Cougars there, and a big sack defensively. The Cougars coming up huge to force third and long. Trying to see who that was, Storm. It was Caleb Cunningham. He's made a couple big hits tonight, Storm, but none bigger than this. Just blowing by the offensive line and taking Lester down for a huge sack as the Cougars now force the third and Augsburg Storm. Oh, there it was. Taking the, the Bulldogs' lunch money, though. That was a grown man move right there. Get out of my way. Cunningham Storm went right down Broadway Street right oh, there. There it that is. Sack. <laughs> so I believe that's the first sack of the night here for either teams. Lester now third and forever. Surveys in the pocket over the middle, and that's going to be out of reach. Caden Wengerd wanted the pass interference, not going to get it, and the punt team comes on the field for the Bulldogs. There's not another way Storm to start the half better than what the Cougars just did. They were able to shut down the run game on the early downs and then Cunningham able to pin his ears back, get back to the quarterback and get a sack and force a third and long. And now fourth and long Storm obviously punting situation here 
Now the Cougars are going to be set up in business. Pump formation here for the Bulldogs. Almost blocked. But that is a booming kick as Ringler fields it at about his own 20. Won't get much further ahead, but Crestview with a huge defensive stand to start the second half. Really surprised, no flag thrown right there. So I thought it was a face mask on East Knox, but maybe the refs are saying he didn't get enough of it. But nonetheless, Crestview here with another opportunity to struggle to put some points on the board. And we saw them come out early in the first drive in the first quarter with a lot of you know heavy run package. But as East Knox kind of was able to figure that out, they went heavy pass. This is an offense that really has shown that they can attack from both areas. It's a team storm that, that is in, in, in perfect symphony storm. They all follow each other. The run game is marinated with the pass game and vice versa. To, to be able to pass the ball, you've got to be able to run the ball to set up some of those play actions. We've seen Crestview absolutely dice up the defense when they're able to get back in shotgun and hit a play action to Raymer and then go deep to Ringler or Perkins. Crestview so far has looked pretty solid storm amidst maybe one or two drives offensively. Some some great adjectives from you there, Garrett. Uh, what did you say, symphonic? Symphony. Symphony. Okay, I mean, kind of the same thing. Marinate. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like those. So it's going to be second down, about seven here to go for the new set of downs for Crestview. Liam this time under center. Hands it off once again to Raymer. He'll maybe pick up one on that one. And this is the exact scenario we saw the entire first half, Garrett, where East Knox would get them, uh, would get Crestview down to third down, fourth down, but just could not get that one final stop. We'll see. If they make, you know, buckled down, made the halftime adjustments, or if Crestview will come out and pick up the first down. Storm, I know you just told me a lot of information, but ever since I said marinade, I've been thinking about your opinion on marinara sauce. We can tackle that after this play. Okay, this is a big third but down. But this is a so. huge third down. Big third down here for the Cougars. Let's see if they open up the passing game. I think it's a passing situation here, Storm, for Coon. Liam in shotgun. Little bubble screen out to his left. Raymer trying to catch the edge, will not, will get tripped up. That was Brian Householder, the senior, 6'1", making a big play when the Bulldogs need it. Man, someone did they need it ever. Big time stop right there from Householder. And he's a, I believe, Storm, a heck of a baseball player as Householder. I believe I covered him a couple of games in baseball. One of the pitchers there for the Bulldogs, but out here on the gridiron with the shoestring tackle, big time play too to force a punt from the Cougars. Nice punt here from the Cougars. Fair catch called. That ball caught from Brayson Davis. That'll bring up first down for the Bulldogs. So a couple of great defensive stops for either team. Garrett, back to your question about marinara sauce. <laughs> Depends on the area Depends on the mozzarella stick. There's a lot of factors at play, but I will say this. I like my marinara sauce uh, a lot, I think, thicker than a lot of people do. I don't really like, you know, the water. I want I want a lot of marinara sauce on my mozzarella stick. So are you – so you're rocking marinara with your mozzarella stick. Like, that's your sauce of choice. Like, that, that would be your no. go-to. What are you going with? I would eat them plain. Really? If there's marinara sauce at the function, I'm going to eat marinara sauce. But I, I, I think, well, I don't know. I think it is. You know what? I think it is. I think I think if I had to pick, I would pick that. You'd pick marinara. Yeah, Arby's marinara sauce. You get a four-piece and a Greek uh, gyro meal, La uh, the lamb. It's amazing. It's a good meal. As we got a timeout here from East Knox, let us know your com your your thoughts about marinara uh, sauce. When I think about marinara sauce, I would pick ranch. Storm. That's not surprising. I would pick ranch pretty easily too. Or actually, but, but your barbecue you sauce for everything. Or you could actually even rock the nacho cheese cup you can give them Arby's, which is fire. The cheddar cheese cup. 
From Arby's? Yes. Uh, you know what? That's not a bad option. But Arby's would be the last place I go to eat. You know what? Me too at this current moment in time. But that could change, as always. And... I don't, I don't know. You know, it just changes so often for me. Right now, the thought of fast food, like, makes me want to get sick. But, you know what? Those things change. As out of the timeout, another, another big sack for the Cougars. Caleb Cunningham all in the Bulldogs grill. Two sacks for Cunningham here tonight. Start making a case, an early case for a possible MVP storm. But I know Kuhn also has his name in that hat, but... Game far from over, so a couple Bulldogs too. Storm might be in that conversation, but down on the scoreboard and now third in Olivesburg. Down 13 points. They need a big play here, and there's not many plays in the playbook, Storm, for third and forever. We'll see what they elect to go to as Jax Lester takes a three-step drop back. Another screen here for the Bulldogs but they get just past about the original line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up another long fourth down and probably the field goal unit, or the punt team, excuse me. Be a little far for a field goal. I was going to say, so when they bring out Justin Tucker here, that's <laughs> Scott Bailey. Well, it should bring out me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I mean, what's that? Eight, uh, 70 yarder, 75, 80 yarder? I don't know. About a 70-yarder. It's in my range. 75. That's right on the cusp of my range. So I don't think you could kick a 15-yard field goal. I bet I could. I, I'd be willing to put $100 that I could cook a, a kick cook, kick a 15-yard field goal as that one is returned to about the 33-yard line, and the Crestview offense will take the field once again. So standing on the 15, you think you could make a field goal? Oh, yeah. I'll bet you 100 bucks. I think I could. You got to think it's also five yards from the the beginning of the end zone to the end. So it's really a 20-yard field goal. I thought it was 10 yards. I thought the end zone was 10 yards. Oh, I mean, yeah, so 10. How many, okay, how many tries do I get? One? Like I don't even get a practice attempt? No. Then no, I don't think I could do it without a, with no warm-up. Like I, I don't think I could. Crestview with the handoff to Cleet Rogers. He's swallowed up in the backfield by East Knox and Garrett. There were a lot of adjustments here at halftime because, I mean, the defenses both have come out and are not allowing anything. That's from the entire first half. All we saw was all offense, and now past the midway point here in the third quarter, neither team able to really get anything going. It's been a, a defense. It's a minded second half, and, Let's see if Crest can get something going, maybe open up that air attack. Kuhn now fakes the handoff, has to step up in the pocket, uses his legs to create some space, and a beautiful catch to Tyson Ringler. He's got space on the outside, but it'll get tripped up. Garrett, Liam Kuhn is a, I mean, look at the vision to keep his eyes downfield. It's uh, giving me some Pat Mahomes vibes. That's what right I'm there. saying. Somehow, <laughs> wasn't pretty storm, but Liam Coon was able to find Tyson Ringland. He's down, I believe, with just a cramp. Immediately went to grab that leg, and thought I heard them yelling that on the sideline. Storm, so a cramp here from Tyson Ringland after he made the big catch. And I, of course, that's all. All we always hope it is. As you know, in these first few weeks, Garrett. You know the the key to stay high, uh, you know, staying hydrated is is very very important, uh, especially with how hot and humid it can be out here. And Storm, I know that Coach Avedo, you know, he was my defensive coordinator back when I played here at Crestview, and I still remember to this day every Thursday, make sure you hydrate, make sure you hydrate throughout the night. And you know, none of us probably did. I mean, we were high school kids, but you know, he at least did preach that and. Ringling here looks to be down with a cramp, but I think he might have shaken off Storm. And 
Might be headed to the sideline for a little bit more further evaluation. Up and moving on his own power, which is a good thing. And what a huge loss that would be for this Crestview offense. As I think Tyson Ringler has only not been targeted like three or four times by uh, Liam. At halftime, Storm, he had three catches for 75 yards. Ooh, that would have been his gosh. fourth catch for, I would say, at least 25 more yards. So I would say he's closing in on the century mark. It's going to be a false start here for the Cougars. It's going to put him in reverse, back him up five yards. So that'll bring up first and 15. Five yards, first down and 15. Just under five minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Crestview with the ball, first and 15 off the penalty. I formation, Liam Kuhn hands it off to Raymer. He'll maybe pick up a couple on that one, bringing up second down. Either offense able to get anything to go here, Storm. And the clock is ticking, winding down here in the third quarter. We are just 4.30 remains here. And Crestview still with that halftime advantage that they have, 20 to 7. A little bit more on this drive, but that play right there sends the Cougars backwards is now second and long. And time flies when you're having fun, Garrett, and I'm having fun here live and free on the OH Report as this is a big set of downs here for the Cougars. Liam takes it in shotgun, tries to find a man over the riddle. It looks like Tyson Ringler maybe wasn't ready for it. I don't think he had his head turned yet. Oh, Storm, and if he would have had a, his head turned too, it was a nice pitch and catch. Liam Kuhn had to get the ball out, had the defender bearing down on him, and just not able to connect there. And that's the miscue storm that can come and hurt you. It's now still third and long here for Crestview. See what they go here in the playbook. We've seen them convert plenty of thirds, third down, though. It seems like, I, I mean, I know this isn't true, but it's like it's their strategy to get to third down and then just pick it up. Maybe we can have you talk to Coach Keener, Storm after, and see <laughs> if his offensive playbook is built for third and 20s. Kuhn rolls out, surveys, tries to get away from the pressure, almost picked off. But he will be brought down, and I think they're just going to call that an incomplete pass, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Beautiful defense here from East Knox. They recognized that screen on the backside, was able to get a guy out there to stop that. Kuhn almost made a huge miscue there, almost threw it right in the hands of an East Knox defender. Nonetheless, Another stop here for this Bulldogs defense from their hanging tough here in the second half. And that would have been that would have been great field position for the Bulldogs to say the least. But luckily for the Cougars, that one falls incomplete, and that's going to bring on the punting unit here for Crestview. It's been a long summer, Garrett. Can't believe high school football is already back. It seems like, seems like it was barely even three months off. Two weeks already, Storm. Oh my gosh, this isn't week one. As there's a little bit of a miscue there from the Cougars. Caden Moore jumped on it a little prematurely, but still a great punt from the Cougars. I think this is the drive from that East Knox has to get points on the board. This is their opportunity. The defense, it's, they've been able to stop this Crestview offense storm, but you got to think the Crestview offense is finally going to eventually figure it out and get some stuff going. This is the Bulldogs' chance here to get right back into this game. For sure, we'll see if they can overcome the Crestview defense, who's made some stellar adjustments at halftime. We'll see what Jax Lester and company can do as he takes the shotgun snap. Rolls to his left, has a man open, a little overthrown, but Brayson Davis was open there. Had the opportunity on that little corner out right there, Storm. East Knox not able to hit on these easy ones. They need these to get back into this game. Not great field position for Lester and company. Still backed up into their own end zone. So second down and 10 here. Lester hands it off. Big hole here for East Knox. One man to beat. Lot of room there and a big gain 
for the Bulldogs, Blake Elliott with another stellar run. That's exactly what's going to open up that passing game is giving it to Elliott, letting your workhorse back, get some big yardage, taking this all the way down to the 45-yard line. Storm as East Knox is now in business. And maybe that was the momentum play that East Knox needs to put some points finally on the board here in this second half and open up the scoring column. As we have first and 10 right about the 45-yard line. Lester takes a snap, hands it off once again to Elliott. Nice pickup there of about five. That'll put us at second down. Great opportunity here for the Bulldog Storm to get right back into this game. Just down two scores. Plenty of time left in this one. Three minutes remain here in the third quarter, and they're at the 50-yard line a second and manageable. Lester has Elliott right beside him. Two men out to his left. Takes a snap, wants to get rid of it quickly, and does. Gorgeous pitch and catch there from Lester to Brayson Davis. The dynamic duo of Jax Lester and Brayson Davis have been bread and butter all night long. Beautiful pitch and catch as East Knox is moving storm. You know, Garrett, you could definitely tell that the, both these sophomore quarterbacks have their favorite receivers. They have their first options. Yeah, these guys are going to be, you know, these programs, they're, they're, they're in good hands storm the next couple of seasons. East Knox now with putting together a good drive. Lester takes the snap, fakes the rollout, and another great defensive play. That time, Gavin Keynes bursting through the seams and getting a big stop. Nowhere to go is big Gavin Keynes in the backfield right there. Another brother. A lot of lineage here, Storm, throughout the years of last names, but and a lot of shoes to fill. But so far here tonight, everyone's been doing their job. Rammer, Kuhn, been getting it done on the offensive end, but now the defense for the Cougars has to step up, and a big-time play right there from Gavin Keynes. Lester rolls to his right, pressure coming. Surprise, surprise, Brayson Davis on the receiving end of that pass as his helmet comes off. And in high school, you got to come out, right, yeah, for one play? Yeah, come out for one play. And that's interesting. On, on third and six, seven, they're going to have to go without their best receiver. Yeah, he's definitely been one of their better players on offense, from, especially in the passing game. He's been the best receiver out there, out wide. Him and Lester's had that kind of connection, that chemistry. Let's see where Lester goes here on third down. I think it's if you're gonna be if you're gonna be in fourth down territory, you have an opportunity here to run the ball to get him back in the game. But if you're gonna punt it, it's a passing down. Lester looking to pass, trying to go over the middle once again. He gets it there. That should be a first down for him. Yep. That's gonna be a first down and a big one at that. Davis has to head to the sidelines, but the East Knox offense gets the first down. Dangerous here for Crestview. Yes, from these little dink and dunk opportunities for East Knox is just working to perfection. Crestview's kind of just playing and, and letting them play in front of them, not letting them get beat over the top. But eventually that could backfire, Storm. We'll see if Crestview can get a stop here. Time is starting to become of the essence as we just hit the one minute mark left here in the third quarter. East Knox with a good drive. Lester hands it off to Elliott. Not as successful on that one, but still picks up a few yards. Garrett, both these passing attacks are working basically to perfection. You think it's going to kind of come down to who can get the running game and open up those holes for their guys to run through uh, here late in the fourth, or excuse me, here coming up in the fourth? I think it's going to be up to these defensive storm. If Crestview's able to stop this passing game, so far they've been able to hold East Knox in check on the ground game. If they can stop this passing game and really make them one-dimensional and not even have to worry about the run, just worry about the pass, it could be good for the Cougars. But so far, Lester has diced up this defense and a tip pass. Oh, my goodness. Tyson Ringler stays on his feet, catching the ball on both ends of the field. That's going to be the first turnover of the night. A little tip drill, and he is hyped. 
Man, Storm, great play from Crestview right there. Let's see if a D lineman tipped it. He did. I can't get a good visual storm on who got his hand up there, but he made the play right there. And Tyson Ringler finished it out for the first turnover of the game with just four seconds remaining. I think that might be big Gavin Kane storm there on the end. Somebody with white gloves on the line. So if you know who that is, first one to comment who it is gets to take credit for it. So I'm going in there to write down my name right now. <laughs> but a big momentum shifter, to say the least. East Knox putting together a wonderful drive, ends with a turnover. And now Crestview in the driver's seat here to close out the third quarter. Oh, so a fumble. That handoff fumbled. East Knox has East the Knox picks wow. it up to end the third quarter. That'll do it for the third quarter. You're not going to want to step away from this one, folks, as that one coughed up. East Knox takes control with a fresh set of downs at the 30-yard line. We're going to be right back. Money time coming up next here live and free on the OH Report. Are you ready for the comeback? Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Hello and welcome back to Crestview High School. Storm Bluffs is joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett here at Scott, Bo Scott Bailey excuse me, Memorial Field. And Garrett, a couple of turnovers could be costly for both of these squads. As we saw last play before the end of the half, a fumble and that's going to lead to a big run here from East Knox. That's going to be Aaron White off of the mistake from Crestview, taking it all the way down inside the 10. Touchdown East saving tackle right there from Tyson Ringler. East Knox Storm is knocking on the door here, and what a turn of events. Storm. All the momentum was in favor of the Cougars, but a huge miscue for, I believe, Liam Kuhn on that handoff, and Raymer just weren't able to be in sync, and now it leaves the door ajar, Storm, for the Bulldogs to get right back in this game. Knocking on the door here is East Knox. Jack Lester takes the snap, hands it off once again to Aaron White. Picks up a couple. That'll bring up second down. And, you know, Garrett, that's where you see a little bit of the inexperience there. You know, they get a big play. They're riding that high, and it's, it's the simple things. A handoff, I mean, that's routine. You do that 100 times every day in practice. You know, it's, it's just the little things when you're a young guy. And so if Crestview was able to take some time off that clock, they really didn't even have to score to really try to put that game away. If they were able to take a couple of minutes off, and really it would still be a two-score game, and East Knox would still have to be battling uphill. But now, I mean, this game's going to come down to the wire. Yeah, you're not going to want to step away from your cell phone, TV, tablet, or computer here live and free on the OH Report because we're in for an exciting finish as Lester hands it off once again to Aaron White. And a, a little bit of an interesting call, Garrett, as they're not going to Blake Elliott, who had, had some success both early on in that game and in that, or early on in the first quarter as well as the third quarter, instead electing to go to Aaron White, the senior. Obvious fourth down territory here, Storm. Third and goal. Let's see if East Knox continues to keep it on the ground or if they want to open up that air attack and see if they can find maybe Brayson Davis. He's been living all over the field here to Storm tonight in the passing game. 
Big third down, both fan bases getting into this one. Lester sends a man in motion, looking to the back of the end zone. That one's gonna be just overthrown. And that's gonna bring up fourth down scary play for the Cougars. Just a simple fade ride storm over there to the left side of the field. Lester, too much on it as that one sailed on him. Out of the re out of the reach of the receiver and not sure what the Bulldogs are electing to do here, Storm. Bringing in a lot of packages, a lot of big fellas, so. Possible I ground mean, attack think, here. You think I it's mean, just you're running? I mean, you're, Looks you're like it's gonna be that. All the way at the four yard line. This is a tough call. We're gonna get a timeout here from the Cougars. Timeout, Cougars. <laughs> seems a, a little long to run it here, but they're looking for the old school smash mouth football type of play there. It's from the way they lined up. I don't even think they had Lester in the backfield. I think they just had Blake Elliott. We're just gonna try to play some smash mouth phone booth football storm. But now gives some time for the offensive coordinator for East Knox to maybe mull over his decision and really access the situation. Because I think this right here, Storm, is going to play pivotal in obviously the final of this game. I think if Crest is able to get a stop, it's beginning to look a little tough for East Knox to come back. Not not completely impossible, Storm, but obviously time beginning to become a factor. And a big thank you to our so let me let me step back into to G-Man's coaching for corner. You, you know, you, you, for East Knox, you've been successful on the ground and in the air. What are you doing here? Big fourth down at about four. You have to score, basically, to stay in this game. What are you going with, man? I think you have to have some sort of misdirection, maybe get a guy in motion and have possibly a play action, a fake handoff, and go through the air. I think you have to go to the air. I think you have to put the, the ball in your best player's hands, and I think Jax Lester has been that tonight, but I don't even see him out there Storm lined up behind center. I think it's just Elliott. Here we go. Elliott in the backfield. Takes a direct snap. Gets caught up in the backfield. That's a big fourth down stop. The Crestview Cougars put on their hard hat, get in the construction site, and make a big stop. Cleet Rogers was the first one back in the storm. He sniffed that one out from the get-go. It's now Crestview in the driver's seat once again. He thought East Knox was going to get back in this game. Cougars slammed the door. It's still a two-score game. If you don't like that, you don't like live and free football here. Live and free. Of course, on the OH report. That'll bring up a first down here. Crestview now definitely looking to milk some time off this clock. But still, this this one very far from over. Yeah, so what an action-packed game we've had so far here tonight. Home opener here for the Cougars is Scott Bailey. Liam this time hands it off to Raymer, tries to bounce outside. Picks up nothing, maybe even loses a yard on that one. But Garrett, this is, this is an unfamiliar spot for the Cougars to be in. Uh, last year, and, and even a little bit the year before, there were not a lot of close games on the Cougars' schedule. So it'll be interesting as the season progresses to see how the team handles the pressure in the late game moments, especially when the game is close like this one. Very high pressure scenario being backed up heels right on their own goal line. It'll be interesting to see how things play out. Coon under center, hands it off once again. Another stop here for the Bulldogs right at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up down number three. As you mentioned, Storm, a very young QB, too. Leading the, round, re leading the helm is Liam Coon. He's been prolific tonight, to say the least. He's, he's done his job uh, pretty tremendously uh, as Coon, but in a big spot here. Curious to see. I'm sure Keener's just going to keep it on the ground here, try to milk some of that clock, and have to punt it from inside their own five, and East Knox should get good field position out of this storm. Unless, I mean, I'd be very surprised if Cressy comes out here and throws a pass. I would be as well. However, Kuhn and shotgun, receivers both to his right and left, drops back, looks for the fake, has Ringler, Oh gets the catch. God. Oh, my goodness. These guys are unbelievable. How about the guts by Coach Keener, the offensive coordinator, to call a play, a pass play, and trust and their sophomore QB. Not only to call a pass play strong, but a double move. I mean, that's got to take a lot of time from the offensive line to, to keep Kuhn upright. And Kuhn threw that storm as he got drilled, too. <laughs> yeah. And he dropped that right in a bucket. 
tremendous route from Ringler and an even better pass storm from Kuhn as these two are dynamic. Yeah, when Kuhn's running the chain game, chain gang for tomorrow's JV game, he's, he's going to be feeling that one, I think. <laughs> so fresh set of downs here as they Cougars hand this one off. Again, no surprise there. Keith Abshire gets the touch. I, I cannot, I can't believe that. Crazy call and a great execution from the guys out there. And watch Kuhn, too, on the pass. I mean, he got rocked. And how selfless uh, is that of a quarterback to you know, not care about the hit, sacrifice his body, and still complete that pass? That's, that's the play of the game. Oh, for sure. That's what, uh, Chris, he holds on. Uh, that's, that's the play of the game. And Cougars, you better get out there and vote. I hear that a team won it in a landslide. So... The, the play of the game voting. As Kuhn gears up for another deep ball, has Ringler just out of reach that time. Garrett, this, this, this offense is not, they don't shy away from the moment. Okay, winning ticket. They like throwing a deep storm. Kuhn has a lot of chemistry with Ringler. Tried to hook up, hook up with him right there, but just not able to find the connections. That stops the clock now with 7.09 remaining. All right, Garrett, get your tickets out. We got, got the 50-50. A, yeah, a lot of uproar out here for the, for the tickets. Oh, it's my ticket. No, I'm, I didn't buy any. I'm going to buy. I think I'm going to. That's my new thing this year. I'm going to start buying 50-50 tickets. As a third and long here for the Cougars. Going to get a flag storm. What's the X delay game? I think that might be too many men on the field. Could be wrong, Storm. I don't got my referee calls down pats so far this season. A little early in the year for that. Maybe, you know, Cougars must have been checking their 50-50 tickets. Of game. Can you blame them? I thought the delay of game was a pat on the head. Uh, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm a commentator, not a ref. <laughs> As it is third and even longer here. Liam takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls out, tries to dump that one underneath, but it will be incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. So despite the heroics there on third and uh, third and ten, I believe it was, on their own goal line, the drive still ends up in a punt, which I think is okay for the Cougars. You got some breathing room. You're going to great or uh, set up East Knox, hopefully for support field position for them. So... Still a, a small victory, I think, for them. It took some time off the clock, too, which obviously helps in a situation like this. Let's see if this punt team can get its job done. Is a little bobble of a snap storm and not the greatest punt in the world is this one. It's going to set up Brayson Davis. Oh, my goodness. Man, it's from, they're hitting the night. Yeah, Davis on the receiving end that time. That was a... That was a hard one. I don't think he saw him coming. Good field position here, though, for East Knox, and plenty of time to get right back into this game. They yeah. were so close, Storm, to, to punching that one in. Uphill battle here for East Knox. 6.54 remaining. Still have time, especially with the way they've been able to pass the ball here tonight. See how aggressive they are in trying to get this first touchdown. So definitely some decent starting field position here for the Bulldogs. We'll see if they can put together another great drive. As it'll be a pass through the air. And uh, can you guess who it was, Garrett, on the receiving end? Brayson Davis once again. And it looked like there was no there was no room around him. I'm not even sure how. It's kind of hard to tell from my angle, but it looks like there's like five or six Cougars right there. And somehow Davis is able to find that lucky spot. Lester hits him in stride. Lester drops back once again, that time broken up. They've been hitting these short routes all night, Storm. Be curious if East Knox throws up a double move of their own. You saw the corner there from Crestview jump the route. Might be a perfect time for a pump fake Storm to go deep. Kind of like just saw the Cougars yeah. did a couple plays ago. 
Well, that stops the clock. Third and about five here for the Bulldogs. Knocking on the doorstep of that 50-yard line as Lester in the backfield. Rolls out to the left, throws on the run, and he's got his man, Brayson Davis, who's got a lot of yak. Eventually brought down at about the 25-yard line. He looks to be shaking up too, Storm. Immediately grab him for that left leg. Let's hope Davis is going to be okay. As always, hope that's just a cramp. Never like to see that. Guys are stretching them out. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You've been watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. After that injury timeout, Davis was able to walk off under his own power, which is a, a good sign for everybody. As we resume, first and 10 here for the Bulldogs. Lester drops back, rolls to his right, feels the pressure, throws on the run. That one going to be out of bounds, Garrett, in the defensive line for Crestview stepping up. Big play there. I think it was Calvin Keynes out there on the edge, able to get to the QB and Get some pressure on him, almost had a sack, but good play there and heads up play from Lester just to get that one out of bounds and live the fight another day. Brings up second down here for the Bulldogs. 5.57 left to play here in the fourth. I think it's uh, it's about time to you know call this a must-score drive here for the Bulldogs. Yes, yeah, Strom, I think they definitely got to get points here and, and it has to be a touchdown. Lester drops back, feels the pressure again, hit. Oh, holds on to the football, rolls to the left, gets tripped up, and a stellar play once again from the Crestview defensive line. A myriad of them, Caden Moore, ends up tripping up Lester for the big loss. Almost thought he got rid of that ball storm with a little bit of a jump pass, but a shoestring tackle for Moore. And now third and long here for East Knox. This Crestview defense just continues to answer the challenge. I thought he got rid of it too. He definitely pump faked me out of my shoes as this is going to be a huge third and long here for the Bulldogs. Lester takes the snap, has a lot of time in the pocket, getting chased down, uncorks this one, got a man. 50-50 ball broken up by the defender. Oh my goodness. Great play from both sides, but Bryce Perkins able to break that one up. Almost thought he mossed here, Storm. Looked like the ball was kind of jarred free on the ground, too. I think he was able to go up and get it, but just wasn't able to collect it through the process of the ground. So it's, I mean, it's it's four down territory here. Fourth and four ever here for the Bulldogs. Huge play here for both sides. Lester drops back, plenty of time, starting to feel the pressure a little bit, takes off with his legs. Decent gain, but that's not going to be enough, and that'll be a turnover on downs. Lester didn't like what he saw downfield, decided to take it himself and see if he can make something happen. Crestview defense able to corral him, and now just five minutes remain as Crestview just looks to run this clock out, storm, and walk out here with their first win of the year. 
A lot of offense there in the first half, Garrett. Who thought we'd be at the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter without another score? I want to highlight, though, this Crestview defense, especially the line, has been playing out of their mind here in the second half. Yeah, highlight the names of Gavin Keynes and Caleb Cunningham. That is both guys with sacks tonight and getting it done, forcing some pressure on Lester and company. So Crestview now looking definitely to use up some clock as East Knox having some personnel issues. That one handed off. Cleet Rogers, maybe a gain of one on the play. Garrett, the East Knox defense definitely not giving up, not hanging their head. They're still playing to win this one. As we've seen them step up pretty big here in this one too. It's, it's been a it's been a tale of two halves: offense in the first half, defense in the both half in the second half. You know, both sides storm got to contribute to win a football game, and right now, Crestview's doing a great job of marrying both of them. Storm, offense has been setting up defenses in great positions, and vice versa. The interception the defense had in Tyson Ringler, and this offense for Crestview came out and establish a run game and then open up the pass and the passing game for Crestview so far tonight. I mean, it's been pretty flawless to say the least. I think Liam has only missed once, twice. Yeah, Storm, I think he's I mean, that's me, that's I mean, like me numbers. I mean, he, he's in the conversation for, for uh, MVP, Storm. I definitely think so. Let us know in the comments who your pick for MVP is. I'm always going to throw my hat in the ring and say myself for being such a spectacular OH reporter, but I'll leave that up to the discretion of the fans. Don't even say anything. We're going to have this argument again like we do every game. I'm so not. I'm, I'm going to leave not, it at that. I'm not going to fight it anymore. So third down about five. The Cougars hand it off once again, but the Bulldogs able to get a stop there. They're going to call a timeout. That's going to bring up fourth down so a little bit of life here still left for the Bulldogs see if this offense gets some going Storm see if the, the passing game they can get down to the red zone area but the Crestview defense kind of stipends up and doesn't really allow them to get much and that's really been the story this second half East Knox has been able to move the football just haven't been able to, to cash in on those opportunities when they get close to that end zone close to that foam zone I agree, and, you know, it's pretty hot out here, Garrett. I think the, the players are going to need some FZ 150 after these one. You know, the, I think the cleats are going to be a little dirty. You know, when you, when, you, when you see the foam, you're in your zone. I'm sure a lot of these kids, you know, want to save 150 bucks. So and you, you got to look at the difference. And then you got to look at the difference from when you clean your shoes the first, when you don't clean your shoes, and when you clean your shoes. So big shout-out to FZ 150. Students Keeping all the cleats clean. Out of the timeout, fourth down and about five for the Cougars there in punt formation. East Knox with a little bit of life left. A little bit of a high snap, but a great punt here and a fair catch for the Bulldogs is they're going to have to get something going quickly, but we've seen them put together a couple of really, really good drives, just only able to put it in the end zone one time. It's a credit to that Crestview defense stepping up big when they need to, and I think with this passing attack storm, they at least have a chance to get back into this game. It just it happened, it has to happen quickly. You're running out of time. You're running out of timeouts. And the opportunities you have, you haven't been able to cash in. You have to be able to do so if you want to win this football game. So we'll see if the Bulldogs have any last-second miracles up their sleeve as we're approaching three minutes left. Lester hangs it out the reverse pass. That one sniffed out by the Cougars. Great discipline on that play. I believe that was Abshire Storm. and I mean, that's great discipline to stay home, too, on the double reverse. They're trying to get you with a trick play. The Cougars shut that down. I mean, this Crestview team has been fabulous here tonight, Storm. Sorry, I was laughing. If that were me, man, when I played in 6th, 7th, or 8th grade, I bit on every fake. I, I, was, I was bad. As Lester finds a man down the sidelines, it's going to bring up 
third down. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I, 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 every time I was on the defensive line. You're definitely the guy that when they said, we're going on two, don't jump, and you jump. I didn't, I didn't jump off sides on offense. On defense, if you if you hard counted, it would take me six or seven times in a row probably to figure out that not to go on one. But it's because I always give 110%. Can't fault a guy for that, right? Lester hands it off to Elliott. He's going to pick up the first down and more. Streaking down the sidelines, he will get caught. But Carrot, th I mean, things getting a little interesting here. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. You don't want to, you know, put this game away and fall asleep. East Knox still has a chance to get back into this game. I mean, if they can get a touchdown here, and there's there's time left to get a stop and get the ball back and see if, and see what you can do. So Crestview, I mean, if they get a stop here, the game's over. But it's a tall task. This East Knox offense has been able to move the ball. This might be a stupid question, but can you onside in high school? Yes. Lester, looking. Right side, I believe that that was Davis once again. The Bulldogs marching down the field. They still have two timeouts here. We'll see if Crestview can step up and make something happen, but that's going to be another first down for the Bulldogs. Lester once again on the sideline. We'll see if he kept his... Feet inbound. I think they're going to say no catch. I think they're giving it to him. So oh. I think he was in. Great two to stop the clock, get out of bounds. That was Brayson Davis once again. He's not he's going to save those two timeouts for the defense inside the ball if they can get a touchdown here to try to get the ball back. Well, 2-12 here left in the fourth quarter. Things starting to heat up, that's for sure. Lester shotgun once again. This time bounces to the left. Has a man in the end zone once again. Brayson Davis. Back left corner of the end zone. Lester hits, his, hits him in stride. And things are getting interesting. Plenty of time to storm. And if they can convert this PAT, they just need six points to tie the game up. And then they could eventually go on to take the lead if they can convert that PAT. But... Jax Lester and Brayson Davis. This connection has been money all night long, and they're money once again here in money time. Nice pitch and catch for six from Lester to Davis. So two timeouts here for the Bulldogs. As that one splits the upright. Things are getting interesting. You're not going to want to miss the end of this one. Can Crestview hold on to the 20 to 14 lead they have over the East Stocks Bulldogs? Find out after this break. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top of the line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hardworking, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Welcome back to Scott Bailey Memorial Field. Storm Blunchley joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And the Cougars are going to take a timeout, which gives us a timeout to look once again at this scoring play and talk a little bit about what's going on here in this one. It's that same touchdown Storm they had early in the game. Just a rollout left for Lester and Brayson Davis with a corner out. I mean, look at the separation. Two yards, nice pitch and catch. And they went to their bread and butter Storm. It's worked all night. And now East Knox is right back into this game. If Cougars get a first down, the game is virtually over. But it's if they can get that one first down storm. I'm interested to see if East Knox elects what, the, what they elect to do here on this kickoff. So what's interesting, Gary, I think, is that I think a big thing is that Steve Coach Havido from Crestview is still out explaining to some of the guys Yikes. Yeah. on what's going on. Trying to get them set up because of a possible onside kick here. So what is interesting is that that missed PAT from the Cougars on their third touchdown, that could come into factor here if the East Knox Bulldogs are able to take back possession of the football. 
That one's going to be, oh my goodness, almost a perfect onside kick, but a little too strong. Here, that was, that was so I was think the Cougars that, fans were sweating a little bit. That had a little less steam. That could have been East Knox football pretty easily. See the miss right there. If that could have stayed in bounds from it, had a chance. It had some potential, but it will go out of bounds, and it will set up Crestview in pretty solid field position. But I think all they're doing, Storm, they're focused on getting this one first down. Let's see if they can try to knee this game out. This one still a decent way from being over. As there's been some dramatics, Garrett, our first game back on the mic. This has been, a, this has been an exciting one. Curious to see how offensive coordinator Coach Keener does this storm because they're obviously going to stuff the box. They're expecting run. You're going to want to run the football, but eventually it's going to come down more than likely to a third down unless Chris, you can get a first down. And you don't want to run out of bounds, and Raymer didn't. We'll be Got a time, close. We'll be timeout here for East Knox. So it's going to be interesting yeah, if it gets to third down well, storm. Does Crestview elect to pass the football? Or do they elect to run it and blow some more clock off and kind of hang your hat on your defense and see if they can win the game for you? Like I said, Garrett, you know, this is where a little bit of the inexperience from last season comes in. I mean, it's been a full calendar year, basically, since the Cougars have had to play in a close game. So we're seeing now kind of the thought process that, you know, Haverdale and those co the coaching staff for Crestview goes through is they have to, you know, close out this game offensively in a tightly contested contest. This is a tough spot to be in, Storm, because you don't want to pass the football and it be an incomplete pass and you stop the clock and you let East Knox keep a timeout to stop it when it's on fourth down. So this is a, this is a big set of downs here. And they just got a short game on that running play the last time. They're going to line back up in I formation. And I would expect another run, but maybe some tricks up Coach Keener's sleeves. I mean, we thought he was going to run it on that goal line, too, as that one's another stop. We thought that they were going to run it, but they came out past. This will be very interesting. Out of the timeout here, I'm sure, from East Knox. East Knox coach elected to, to keep that timeout. I'm sure he's going to call it after this play, assuming they get, the obviously, the stop. So now you have to run it, right? Well, I mean, it depends it Depends if you if you trust your offense more than your defense. If you trust your offense, you're going to want to probably pass here and try to get that first down. But it looks like they're going to take it down, Storm, and, and probably elect to – See oh, if their defense no. will win it, but a false start, too, and that, that's going to stop the clock. That was the far man down the field. Caleb Cunningham, who's had a stellar night defensively, just a tiny twitch there. I'm not sure, Storm, if they – Does the clock run? I think they might run the clock after they blow the whistle. So – Once everybody's set, but, I mean, it's – Really, it doesn't matter. Third and long, regardless. That, I, I would expect them to run the football here. Have to. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to put it in arm's way. So it should be fourth down after this storm, unless the Cougars are able to get a first down here, and it should be a timeout for the Bulldogs. And that, that, that does stop the clock at, at 116 as we see the handoff. Cleet will get nothing on that one, and Carrot. We got a flag storm. Uh oh. I'm not sure what we're getting here. I am not either, but this is a this is a huge call here. This is huge. See the refs discussing it. It's been a well officiated game here so far. Not a lot of defense, a nice clean football game for both these squads. As we see, I don't know, Gary, you see anything in there? I didn't see anything on the play from up here, but I got better eyes down there, Storm, on the field. We'll take a look at the replay and see if we can get – I mean, I think it was at the end of the play. I would only think maybe like an unsportsmanlike conduct, but here's the call. We'll see what the stripes say. Still trying to figure this one out. It's a big call, too. This is huge. I think they're going to call it on Crestview. Holding, huh? Dead ball personal foul against the Cougars. So, I mean, it even 
gives East Knox even better field position here. It's going to be a punt from Crestview. And curious if they, well, they do switch to fourth down. So Storm, it's fourth and a country mile. And wow, East Knox is going to get tremendous field position, Storm. I mean, that, that, is, that, that is a huge 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 miscue from the Cougars in that playoff game that we first covered what was that night 2019 yeah it was 21 the, 20 the kicking was the deciding factor will history oh, repeat so itself but, some Cougars fans some nightmares but still here. a lot of time here they, they, a lot could happen in a minute and 15 seconds but whew, this is a classic already I mean who doesn't love Crestview East Knox Not sure what the confusion is, Storm. Steve Havadel now sends the punt team on. We'll see what happens, Storm. I mean, they're backed up. This is going to be great field position here. And Brayson Davis is back for East Knox. All the momentum is on the Bulldog side. Snap, punt. Not a great punt, Storm. It's going to be about the 43. And they're already in Cougars territory. The thing is that the Bulldogs, they need a touchdown. Yep. One minute to do it, one time out. It's been tough all night long for the Cougars to stop the Bulldogs passing offense. So we'll see. My heart rate's up, Garrett. I'm standing up. This is going to be an instant classic. Right. 108 remains, Storm. I mean, these are the kind of games you love to call, love to watch, Storm, and... Here we go. Lester, or yeah, excuse me, Jax Lester in the backfield. Receivers to each side. Takes it. One step drop back. Looks to the sideline. That one going to be incomplete. Stops the clock. Not a great start for East Knox on this one. Really, the only thing good in that storm is that it does stop the clock. Not a lot of time taken. I mean, that was. It was only five seconds taken off. It was 108 when they started the drive, but I think they'd much rather have <laughs> the, 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 the clock stop than maybe a minimal gain for about four or five. We'll see if we same that, see that same boot to the left play. Look like offsides, and it will be offsides. They're going to call a false start. Yeah. Josh, Keith, if you watch at the top of your screen. Just that little move right there, that's all it takes. Some mental lapses here, Garrett. I'm, I've, I've been trying to break the habit of biting my nails, but I'm about to start, man. Lester now takes the snap, stays in the pocket, goes over the top. That one tipped, a lot of contact, no penalty flags on the field. Let's take another look at that scrum. I didn't get a good view of it initially. Uh, I think that was clean. I didn't really see enough there to really, you know, initiate any kind of call from the officials. Great defense from the Crestview back in and out. Third and 15, so all the momentum is beginning to switch back to the Cougars. And here comes that home crowd storm, as you see on the camera. <laughs> Garrett, you know where the football's going. <laughs> Cover Brayson Davis if you're the Cougars. Lester rolls to his right, has a little dump off to Davis. A lot of time, no time, it's gonna be a sack! The Cougars, a huge sack! Oh my goodness, the defense comes up clutch! Big time play right there from Gavin Davis Storm when the Cougars needed it most from their defensive line. Gavin Davis just pow drives Lester. And now they gotta go and hurry up mode. Fourth down, here's the game. Here we go, Lester drops back, looking to Davis. Gonna take the heave, another QB hit. That's gonna be a turnover on downs. The Cougars look like they're gonna hold on for their first win of the season. They do it in Cougars fashion. Big stops on the defensive end. Man, Storman, that was Gavin Davis once again. He's, he's, putting, he's putting, his, putting his hat, Storm, in the MVP conversation. I know Liam kind of stole the show in the first half, but here in the second half, it's been that defensive line, Gavin Keynes and Caleb Cunningham coming up huge as now the Cougars will hold on for their first one of the year. Wow. 
Oh my goodness, what a game here with just 17 ticks separating the Cougars from victory, their first win of the season in great fashion over the non-conference rival East Knox Bulldogs here. This is a, a this is one of the premier rivalries in yeah, the area. So I definitely think it was a very emotional rivalry too, but the Cougars have owned the Bulldogs ever since 2019 and they do it again with a huge win and a light show, 2014 Cougs here at home. You see the lights on the field as the Cougars line up to shake their hands 20 to 14 in dramatic fashion. The Cougars over the Bulldogs. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with final stats as well as our MVP interview here coming up next. Are you ready for the comeback? I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The pub, kitchen, and tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection, both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you wanna catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the pub kitchen and tap has something for everyone. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Back now with our Simonton Construction Services MVP of the night. It was a tough battle, but we had to go with Gavin Keynes. He had the game-winning sack. Gavin, a lot of your teammates could have been in your position. We chose you because your great defensive play, especially there at the end, basically sealed the game for you guys. Talk to me about the emotions you were feeling, what the game plan was, what the play was. Just give me it all. Man, it felt great. I mean, we knew they were going to go for pass plays, so our coach was having us pass rush them. It feels amazing. It was, you know, a tough defensive battle there in the second half. Both squads were really stepping up defensively. Your guys' defensive line play was phenomenal. A bunch of sacks, three individually for your own. What were the adjustments at halftime to uh, kind of step up defensively there? Uh, basically, um, sometimes we would have a heavy heavy line up front we'd bring some tackles in and then whenever we knew they were going to pass we uh did a three front had the ends pass rush uh our coach really helped us there made adjustments got it done awesome man after after a rough start starting off 0 and one you get your first win against a great out of conference rival in east knox talk to me about how you're feeling and, and what you can take away from this game heading into the future and the momentum it gives you Man, it's a great feeling. I mean, that first loss put us down a little bit, but we knew we had to get back at this last this past week. We knew we had to keep pushing. The scout team knew that they had to give us a good look. We knew that these guys were going to be a bit of a challenge, so we were just doing everything we could to be prepared for them. And this, this win definitely builds our spirits up and feels really nice. And last but not least, any shout-outs you want to give? I know Brother's watching at home. He commented live and free on the game. Let's go. Anybody you want to shout-out here tonight? i love to give a big shout-out to Jay Bones. <laughs> he always, he's always watching film, telling me what I can do better. Also, a really big shout-out to the line, our skilled players, everybody, and our sidelines. They're always hyping us up, giving us pass-run calls. All righty, man. Thank you very much. Go out. Enjoy this one. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Once again, our MVP, Gavin Keynes, game-winning sack, brought to you by Simonson Constructions. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready for the comeback? I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The pub, kitchen, and tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection of both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you want to catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the pub, kitchen, and tap has something for everyone. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Welcome back to Scott Bailey Memorial Field. Storm Blunchley joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, what a finish we had here as we take a look at the final stats. Yeah, Strom, great finish we had from these two teams. It came down to the wire. Gavin Keynes with a game-winning sack. He was our Simonson construction MVP storm in a big-time game here for really both sides. It was an offensive showcase there in the first half, 20-7 to in favor of the Cougars. Just one lone touchdown in the second half from Jack Slusser to Brayson Davis. But the Cougars dominated from totaling 312 total yards of offense. They had no turnovers. The only turnover from this game tonight was the interception from Tyson Ringler off a tiff pass from QB Jack Sluster from East Knox. But a dominating win for Crestview Storm. Came down to the wire. It got a little bit dicey, but they got it done here today. They were dominant in the first half. Were able to close it out. You know, a lot to go back and work on in the film room and, and correct. And the same for East Knox. They played a tough game here tonight. Really came on the road and gave Cougars all they had. But they'll move to one and one storm as the Cougars are now one and one as well. They take on Highland next week. Yeah, Garrett, it was a fun one to say the least, but we've got to get going. We've got the Friday Night Pigskin Show coming up here. We're both super amped up to be on it. We're excited. Hopefully you'll join us hopefully a little closer to 1130 as opposed to last week. But it's been a joy. It was a rocky start for us here. But you know what? It was fun. We had fun. Closing thoughts here, Garrett. Another great week, Storm. Cougars move to 1-1. One one. They got a tough matchup against Highland next week, as do East Knox. They take on Colonel Crawford, so two uphill battles for both these squads, but we'll see if they can get it done. All righty, once again, thank you to everybody who was watching live and free at home, our very generous sponsors, as well as everybody involved. Love working here for the OH Report. It's been an awesome night. We're going to catch you later. Thanks for watching.